Hey everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and in this video I want to continue our conversation about the aldol condensation, focusing on the reaction in the basic conditions. If you haven't seen my video on the aldol condensation in the acidic conditions yet, you might want to check it out first, as I'm going to make a few references to the processes and mechanisms that I described in there. And without any further ado, let's jump into our discussion. So, when it comes to the general idea of the aldol condensation in the basic media, the idea is very similar to the condensation in acidic media. We are going to end up with our aldol intermediate, we are going to make a new carbon-carbon bond over here, and if we are doing this reaction at elevated temperature, we are going to end up making the alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl. The difference here, however, is that instead of the acidic condition, we are working in basic conditions, which does mean that our mechanism is going to be different as well. We are going to start by taking our starting material, acetone in this case, and reacting it with the base. Typically, we are going to see this reaction done in sodium or potassium hydroxide. And the first step in this reaction is going to be a proton transfer, where our base is going to come in and deprotonate the alpha position of our carbonyl, making a corresponding enolate species, which of course is going to be our nucleophile. And for as long as we are not using a strong base, and sodium or potassium hydroxide is definitely not a particularly strong base, we are not going to have a a complete analyzation. The equilibrium constant for this reaction is going to be somewhere around like 10 to the negative first, 10 to the negative third power, so it's not a particularly favorable reaction. So we're going to have a little bit of our enolate and a lot a bit of our carbonyl that is just floating around unreacted. And as carbonyls are naturally electrophilic, we are going to have a reaction between our nucleophile and our electrophile, like so, where we are going to end up making a new carbon-carbon bond between the alpha position of our enolate and the carbonyl carbon of our acetone. And as a result of this nucleophilic attack, we are going to make the following intermediate, where we have just formed our new bond over here between our alpha carbon and what used to be a carbon of the carbonyl, so now we are going to protonate that with water that we have in our solution and make the aldol intermediate. Now, if we're doing this reaction at low temperature, then similar to how this reaction works in acidic conditions, we are going to end up with aldol as our major product, and in this case we are just like in the acidic conditions, going to call this reaction an aldol addition rather than condensation. If we, however, want to make a double bond, we need to increase the temperature a little bit. Now, I don't want to crowd my mechanism too much, so I'm going to write my elimination portion of the mechanism as a separate line. So I'm going to restart from my aldol intermediate here, and the first step that we're going to do here, we're going to bring back our base and do a proton transfer to re-enolize our molecule, making the corresponding enolate intermediate. Now, once we have our enolate, we are going to proceed to uh, kicking our leaving group out, which in this case is going to be the OH group, making our final product the alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl. And right now probably some of you look at me like I've had some crazy pills, because I'm using my OH as the leaving group, and we have always been saying that OH is a horrible leaving group, and we both are correct. The thing is, Normally, when we are dealing with leaving groups, we are looking at reactions with either a neutral or acidic conditions, in which OH is going to be a strong base and a strong nucleophile. So in those cases, that is going to be the most nucleophilic species in the system, therefore it's going to be the worst leaving group. However, in these conditions, we already have OH floating around, which means that if we are pushing OH out of our molecule, we're actually not 
not forming anything that is more basic or more nucleophilic than what we already have in our system. So in cases like that, in basic conditions, OH can actually be a living group. And although this is a rare but yet a possibility, this is probably going to be the only reaction within a scope of your course where you ever see pure OH as a living group. So just remember that in this mechanism, OH is a living group on its own. And so before we proceed, let's run through the mechanism one more time real quick. We are going to start this reaction with a proton transfer that is going to give us an enolate. Then the enolate is going to react with another equivalent of the carbonyl, whatever carbonyl we have floating around, giving us the corresponding negatively charged species. And at that point, we are going to be making our new carbon-carbon bond. Then we are going to do the proton transfer, forming the aldol intermediate. If we are running the reaction at low temperature, that is going to be our main product and we are going to refer to this reaction as the aldol addition. If, however, we are doing the reaction at the elevated temperature, we are going to take our aldol and we are going to first enolize that, giving us the corresponding enolate, and then from that enolate we are going to kick the living group out, forming our double bond and getting the alpha-beta unsaturated compound as our final product. And just like in the case of the aldol condensation in acidic conditions, I want to point out here that the elimination step has to happen through the formation of the enolate. It might be tempting to write this reaction as an E2 style reaction, but that is not correct, so make sure you do not do it like that. Always draw your enolate formation first, and then from the enolate we have the living group dissociation. Now, coming back to my reaction, here is another interesting thing that you might see when it comes to the aldol condensation. And that is what I like to call a mixed media approach. Sometimes you're going to see that your reaction starts in the basic media to get you to the aldol intermediate, but then we are going to switch to the acidic conditions and get it to the final product via the acidic acidic elimination. In this case, half of the mechanism that we are going to see is going to come from our basic conditions, namely this portion over here that brings us to the aldol. And then, when we switch our conditions to do the elimination in acid, we will start by protonating our carbonyl, getting the following intermediate. Then, we are going to pull one of the protons off with our solvent, which is most likely going to be water, forming the corresponding enol intermediate, will then protonate OH to convert it into a good living group, get rid of that with the help of our enol, like so, eventually getting us the final product, which is our alpha-beta unsaturated compound. So you can do your aldol condensation in purely acidic media, in purely basic media, or in this mixed media where we start with the basic media and then we finish with acidic media for the elimination portion of it. Now, which method is better? Well, it kind of depends. For simple molecules, it really doesn't matter. For complex molecules that might have different functional groups, well, that will depend on whether your molecule is sensitive towards acidic or basic conditions. So it really depends. There is no one answer that fits all. But your instructor is likely going to be using all three of these approaches Approaches, so you definitely need to know the mechanisms for all of those approaches. Because chances are you'll have to show one of those mechanisms on the test. These three mechanisms are just the beginning of your journey into the aldol condensation. In the next video in the series, I will talk about the mixed aldol condensation, where we are reacting different carbonyls with each other, and then we will talk about more intricacies of this reaction and different ways we can control it better. So make sure you hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss that one, and I'll see you next time!